Today we're starting a new unit on exponents. We're specifically paying attention today to zero exponents and negative exponents. And then next week we'll talk about multiplying, dividing, and raising a power to a power. So be sure that you want to keep along with these notes so that you can understand this stuff when I get back. Okay, the first thing that I want to remind you of is that if I have x to the fourth power, x is what's called the base, 4 is what's called the exponent, and the whole thing is called a power. Okay, nothing has changed on that. We've talked about that before in this class, so hopefully that's, that's still in your brain somewhere. Okay, if we talked about what the base and what the exponent were, if I said 5 to the third, you'd say 5 is the base, 3 is the exponent, 4 to the second, base, exponent, on and on and on. Now, if we look at this chart, I'm going to make a chart here. I want you to do the same. And I'm going to kind of divide it up. If I talk about what is 5 to the third power, 5 to the second, 5 to the first, 5 to the zero, 5 to the negative one, and let's go ahead and make one more set of boxes, 5 to the negative two. Okay, so I've got a whole little chart there. I'm decreasing my exponent as I go along. My base is staying 5. If I said, what is 5 to the third power? You would tell me that's 5 times 5, which is 25, times 5, which is 125. For 5 squared, you'd say 5 times 5 is 25. For 5 to the first power, you'd say, well, that's 5. Okay, now, 5 to the 0, you might get stuck. You may not, I don't know, but if hopefully you can see the pattern as I'm going on here. From here to here, I divided by 25. From here to here, I'm um, not 25, excuse me, 5. From here to here, I divided by 5. If I do 5 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1. So right here, 5 to the 0 power is 1. In fact, anything to the 0 power is 1. If I took 1 and divided it by 5, that would give me 1 fifth. If I took 1 fifth and divided it by 5, that would give me 1 twenty fifth. So, hopefully you see a pattern there. Let's go ahead and make a big note here. Any time, any time the exponent is 0, the answer is 1. Anytime the exponent is 0, the answer is 1. And that is always, always, always the case. So make a big box around that. That's important. Okay, the next thing we want to look at is what about a negative exponent? I guess before we do that, let's look at some examples. If I say 123 to the 0 power, your answer is 1. If I say 1 half to the 0 power, the answer is 1. If I say 1 million... 5,072 to the 0 power, the answer is 1. Hope I've drilled in now that anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is negatives. So what do I do for negative exponents? Okay, well, back in this example, I just continued every time to divide by 5 because 5 was my base. So, when I do negative exponents, I want you to think of it like an elevator button. Because, if I go back up here, there's another pattern I should be able to see. If I put 5 in the bottom, if I think move this negative 1, move it down, so that's down to the first power, I have 1 over 5 to the first power, 5 to the first power is 5. In this one, if I have 1 over 5 squared, think elevator button, I pushed it to the bottom floor and I took off the negative, 5 times 5 is 25. And it would continue that way. So, let's look at some examples. Number one, if I do 3 to the negative 2 power, I'm going to move it to the bottom. So I put 1 on the top, and then I do 3 squared. When I move it, the whole point of moving it is to get rid of that negative. So I do that. I get rid of that negative. And I have 1 over 3 squared. 3 times 3 is 9. So my answer is 1 ninth. Let's look at another one. 2 to the negative 4th power. Okay, if I do 2 to the negative 4th power, I do 1 over to, to the positive fourth power. Again, the reason I move it to the bottom is to get rid of that negative. The 1 stays the same, and 2 to the fourth would be 2 times 2, which is 4, times
times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. So I have 1 over 16 as my answer. Let's look at some with um, variables in them. So example number 3. If I have x to the negative 1 power, to get rid of a negative, I move it to the bottom. So I have 1 over x to the first power. And x to the first power is just x, so I have 1 over x. What about a to the 0 and b to the negative third? I'm going to give you a second to try to do that one on your own. Okay, you should be thinking, okay, there's two separate things going on here. a to the 0 power, if I just thought about that one, anything to the 0 power is 1. So that part stays. Then I have b to the negative 3. Anytime I have a negative exponent, I move it. In this case, it's in the top. There is no other part of the fraction, so it's got to be the top. So I move its base and its exponent. I make its exponent positive, b to the third to the bottom. And that's it. There's nothing I can do with b to the third, so that's my answer. Okay, what about this, one like this? r to the negative third over 7. Some of you are probably saying, well, I just flip it. No, I don't flip it. 7 did not do anything to move, so 7, seven stays. If there's nothing left on the top, I put a 1. The 7 stays on the bottom, and I move the base of r and its exponent, negative 3, to the bottom, so I can make that exponent positive 3. My answer is 1 over 7r to the third power. You try this one. g to the fourth over h to the negative sixth. Okay, this one actually is different, isn't it? We've got a negative in the bottom, we've got a positive in the top. The positive in the top stays exactly where it is. In the bottom, I've got h to the negative 6. It's already in the bottom, so it can't move further down. Instead, it's going to move up the base and the exponent, so I have h, and I move it so that I can change the exponent to a positive, h to the 6. These two are not like terms, so I can't do anything with those exponents. And that's my answer. Two more examples. Looks like we are up to number seven. Example number seven. If I do p to the seventh, q to the negative one. Okay, p to the seventh, perfectly good. That stays on top. There's nothing to move because it's the base is there, the exponent's positive, so it stays. On this one, the problem is that the exponent is negative. It's in the top, so to make it positive, I move the base and its exponent to the bottom, and I change the sign of that exponent. So I've got q to the first. I can rewrite that as p to the seventh over q, or I could leave it as q to the first, but we normally don't write a one. You should know that by now. Last example, eight, f to the negative fourth over g to the negative sixth. Okay, two offensive things happening here. Starting with the top, f to the negative fourth. If I have a negative, it's in the top, I want to move it to the bottom. So I'm going to move it here, and I'm going to change the sign. That's the point of moving it. A lot of people get into a really bad habit. They want to move it here and leave the negative. That defeats the whole purpose. The whole reason we're moving it is to get rid of the negative. Now we've got a negative on the bottom. To move something from the bottom, the only place to go is up. So I take the base of g and its exponent of 6 and move it to the top. And here is my new answer. Your assignment here is A9. It's a worksheet. You're going to work on it by yourself for a little while, and then when she's ready, Mrs. Levi will let you work on it with partners as long as you're behaving. It is due on Monday when I get back. Good luck, and if you have any questions, save them for Monday. Try your best to get as much done as possible.